Justin, it is great to talk to you about Zero Hour. I watched it this morning, as a matter of fact. And I love the fact that it starts out with a bit of a slow burn, but that third act really pulled everything off. And I was surprised that everything is a great movie overall. Happy to hear. Yeah, we tried. I mean, I tried to to do it to where it starts off, you know, on that slower end because she's going to be, you know, working overnight. You know, we've been there. So many people have been there. And no, it's not fun. No. Uh, so the <laughs> night drags on. But when it drags on, you know, other things come with it. Yeah, exactly. So my first question is, uh, how did you come up with the, the film? How, where did the idea come from? We had uh, I have several different projects that I've been been creating. Um budgets and you know ranging from big cast small cast big crew small crew uh for this one you know i was trying to think up ideas of you know what's something that that i can do you know with a smaller group of people that would be fun uh you know and i just kind of played around with several different thoughts uh and, and just started writing you know and coming up with it and you know i love the you know adding twists and stuff in the movies so each step of the way trying to figure out you know which direction i'll take this and that uh, to keep the the audience engaged with it all, you know, especially in this type of situation where you have very, very little cast, you know, to play with and you need to, you know, keep them engaged, you know, as far as the viewer goes. Exactly. And, and that, that isolation style thriller as well, you know, because she's in the high rise by herself and then you have yeah. these. But I also like the fact that at first you could think of it as a supernatural film because, as we know, your character is killed in the beginning. And then it's, this, these messages come up. We, you know, some of us will think this, this ghost is actually like guiding her through this, you know, mad yeah. kind of thing that she's going through. I thought that was that's what I figured out what was going on. Like at first, I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, that's his ghost. Like his ghost is somehow guiding her through like this premonition that's that's going to happen where she's going to be attacked. And that that was mind blowingly. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, how do how did I hear it before? Like. The movie ghost, you know, meets, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a building movie like Die Hard, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not with a very much smaller cast, of course, you know, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's that type of situation where, you know, something to, to make it that much more interesting to say, you know, like, instead of a girl that's, you know, running through a building, let's let's give her a guide along the way. And why not make it her husband that was killed? You know, why not let him be the person to guide her? Uh, and, you know, who knows where it's going to end up, you know, and, and with, with what's behind, you know, all of this. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's where I came up with that idea. Throw a little extra into the story to to keep the the interest uh, alive with it. Yeah. Kudos has to go out to Michaela Hooper. Um, she did a great job on the film as I did. Yeah, she was. I mean, great. she really She's... she really gave it her all. Like, what was it like working with her? She was great. She was I mean, We all had fun. We were all you know, we had a good time doing it. It was like going, you know, to work with your friends having a good time for, you know, a good 10 plus hours each day and, you know, going home and going back the next day to do it all over again. But, you know, the, as you saw, you know, the cast is small. Uh, we had a small group of people on the crew, uh, you know, and because a, a large majority is inside the building, uh, you know, it kept things confined in a way where equipment, everything was at the minimum, uh, you know, so we were able to have more fun you know, and not focus so much on, you know, bigger films where you're running from location to location and, you know, equipment, equipment switching out, you know, and all this different stuff. Uh, but everybody was great. Michaela was great. You know, I, I loved her. You know, she was easy to deal with and work with. And I told her, you know, for my next ones, I definitely want her back, uh, you know, to, to take part. Yeah. And Sarah was great, too, as a best friend. You know, she also yeah. like she was like she was like the human guy to her where Isaac was the supernatural guy, if you will. Yes. You know, and I think yes, that's, and that's really helps. Like she that's kind of what I was. Have, that's what I was going for at the time. So I'm happy that you, you know, I was trying to do that where, you know, she has it on both sides, you know, she has somebody in the real world and someone in the afterlife or wherever they are, you know, that's also trying to, to help her, you know, through this process. Yeah. And I got to admit the, the look on the, the thugs faces look pretty, the masks, they look pretty wicked. That was pretty cool. Where'd that design come from? That I was just trying to come up with something that was basic and easy enough to, to do but something that still, you know, connected specifically to this movie, you know, that had its own, you know, its own, uh, its own connection, you know, to where, uh, you know, I'm like, well, you know, it'd be fun to actually get full black suits, you know, throw in some, you know, you know, throw a gun with a holster, you know, the other, you know, person has a knife, you know, they have different weapons on them, throw masks on with different face 
uh, faces drawn onto those masks. So each person, you know, even the bad people, you know, even they have their own identity in that aspect, you know, where, where, you know, you'll, you'll have X's for one, you know, or a sad face for one, a happy face for another, uh, you know, that type of stuff. You know, I, I wanted to make it a little different. I like, uh, you know, I like the mass aspect in different movies, you know, whether you go from something like Purge or you go for something like Halloween or, you know, you know, Friday the 13th, you know, so I was trying to come up with somewhat of a different idea uh, and that just set on on what it was, you know, where I came to. Yeah, the mask, that's what I was thinking about the Purge, because it looked like, you know, the, the, the different masks, you always see them weren't met in the Purge movies. You yeah, know, I feel like it might have been an inspiration for that. Yes, that was some of the inspiration. I was trying to mix up, you know, a few different things like the black with Scream. You know, I, lo I love the, you know, Scream, original Scream movie from back in the early yeah. 90s. You know, that was the 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 psychological aspect of it, the questioning. And that's kind of, you know, what I like doing with my own films. Uh, so, you know, I got a little inspiration with the, you know, the black outfit from that, you know, a little inspiration from The Purge with the, the way of the masks kind of mixed some things together and, you know, made, made its own, you know, made a, a mask for, for this movie specifically. Uh, yeah. With the costumes. Yeah. And I will say that third act was totally mind blowing. I was not expecting it. The whole entire thing. I was not expecting what happens in the third act. I'm not spoiling it, but it just <laughs> really blew me away. I was like, my mouth literally dropped. I think the whole entire third act, because I was thinking like, did this actually just happen? And then yeah, this actually no. happened and this happened like, and we, you know, when we see what happened, like how it all played out, I'm like, oh, wow. I was like, this is like, bam, like that, that just made this an even more great movie. It's just not just an isolation film. It's much more than we thought. And I, I got kudos to your writing on that. To your, to I, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I like a movie that's going to make your mind work or make you think, you know, what's what's going to happen next. And then maybe even when you think you realized it, you didn't, you know, and then. I like the the continuous psychological aspect of things. That's what I liked going back to a movie like Scream. You know, the fact the entire time you're not sure who or what's going on or, you know, and I like that type of part uh, in filmmaking. So, you know, a lot of my films that I'm developing, you know, I'm developed uh, have those similar type of aspects where you have your twists and turns to keep the audience engaged. Yeah, I think and we need more of that, not just the simple stuff. We need. I, yeah. I like oh, yeah. I like to keep guessing all when I watch yeah. these type of movies. I, I got sometimes even even put a twist on top of the twist on top of a twist, <laughs> you know, just bam, bam, bam. You know, that exactly. way when they think they have the answers, they realize they don't, you know, keep it going. You know, that's what I like. You know, I like my brain working during a movie rather than just sitting there watching, you know, someone get slaughtered up and you know, everything going on in the movie ends. You know, I like something that makes you work a little bit. Exactly. So how long did shooting take and were there any challenges that you faced on, on this one? Uh, we, I, I wrote the, the movie in the months leading up to shooting. We shot for a few weeks uh, in Metairie, a city right outside of New Orleans. Uh, Post-production came on pretty quickly. Uh, it was about a full, about a year, give or take, from the writing portion uh, until completing post-production. Uh, so it's been a pretty quick process uh, as far as, you know, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, we finished shooting, uh, what was it, July, I believe, July 29th of last year. Uh, Post-production was mostly complete by the end of last year, uh, you know, complete by earlier this year. And then I spent, you know, a few months, several months going through the distribution route uh, to, you know, get it picked up and see where we can get it, uh, you know, platform-wise. Um, so, yeah, it was, it's about a year, a little over a year, maybe, uh, from literally the entire entire process beginning to the end. All right. And then, did you face anything during shooting, like any production, like any issues at all, or was it just? No, we, we were pretty good. We had, I mean, it was during, it was on the downside of COVID, you know, so everyone, you know, the, the lockdowns and all, things weren't as locked down anymore, but you still had your, your rules to follow. You had, you know, yeah. things that weren't as easy at the time to deal with and do than would have been a year or two prior. Um, but for the most part, I mean, even with that, uh, you know, things were pretty smooth sailing. You know, I, I'm happy with how everything turned out, with how everything worked. Uh, so there's not really any complaints that I would have or any, you know, complaints as far as having issues while while in production. That's awesome. Well, I, I saw your resume on IMDb. I mean, it's impressive. I mean, everything you've worked on and then you got a whole slew of projects in like in the works. Yeah. Like, so I keep what... developing on top of developing, you know, they, they, it's like one at sometimes I'm like, okay, maybe I should stop developing this new one and go back to the one that <laughs> I was working on two weeks ago. And, you know, it's, it's a way also, instead of having one, uh, you know, to throw out there and try to get moving next, you know, I have multiple, 
Uh, you know, and because of that, you know, it gives me the opportunity where it looks like I'm going to have another one starting up, hopefully uh, in the coming month or so um, that we're going to try to get going at the beginning of the new year. OK, that's awesome. So um, Zero Hour is coming out December 15th uh, from Terror Films. And if you like the slow burn thriller, but then get the most insane twists at the in the third act, you're going to want to see this one because I thought it was going to go one way. It went left field in the third act, but I don't mean that in a bad way at all. A great way. And Justin, man, great job on this movie. I can't wait to see what comes up next from you. I, I appreciate it. Definitely. I appreciate the kind words, too. All right. You take care and you have a good day. Cool, man. You too. Have a good one. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.